In this video, we will be talking about the difference between monocots and dicots. You'll notice at the top of this, we're talking about flowering plants. And there are two different kinds, monocots and dicots. Now, I'm going to teach us a little different in this video. Uh, I'm going to give you an opportunity to copy down the notes first. Then I'm going to come back and talk about them. So if you go ahead and pause the video, you can copy this page. I'm going to put another page up there. And then I'll talk about all the parts at one time. So go ahead and pause the video. We'll be back in just a minute. All right. In this video, you've already copied monocots. All right. And I'm going to come back to these in just a second. I want you to go ahead and get the second group. And then I can compare them a lot easier when you have all the notes. So go ahead and pause the video and write down the information about dicots. All right, let's look at both of them together. Monocots and dicots are two types of flowering plants, and there's all kinds of things that you've written down, so I'm going to go through them one at a time so that you can notice the difference between them. Now, the very first thing you see is that a monocot has a single cotyledon, okay, and it deals with the seed and how a seed is formed. It says a seed that creates a single leaf at sprouting. Now, Cotyledon is actually where this part of the word comes from. Monocots and dicots should be monocotyledon and dicotyledon, but they shorten the word to monocot and dicot. A single cotyledon, and then in the other definition, you'll see that it has two cotyledons. Now, you may not remember what that term means, so I'm going to show you on another piece of paper so that it makes a little more sense. So we're talking about seeds, okay? Here's a picture uh, that shows them sort of side by side so you can look at them a little bit better. Now, feel free to pause and if you're good at drawing, you can copy it down, but I, I'll just sort of walk through a couple of things for you. On a monocot, which has one cotyledon, okay, you can see inside this seed, this is a seed, has a seed coat, the covering on the outside, and it has the cotyledon. This is the part that's going to sprout when you put it in the ground. It'll sprout up and the plant will come out of that. And you can see where it says embryonic root. That's where the root's going to come out. All of that, that stuff inside. So all of this is going to come out the top. In the dicot, you'll see the two cotyledons are here. And uh, so you, you have sort of a background of, of what it looks like. Now, a better picture than this is one that looks like this. And you've probably seen it like this. When you were in elementary school, you probably took a bean and uh, you, you, you would get that bean and probably put it in a Ziploc baggie with a paper towel and every day you would watch it and you would see it start sprouting like this. Okay, this is a dicot. Okay, we'll start with the dicot. You, you put the bean in, you see the root starts to come out and as the root goes down you see all those root hairs that we talked about in one of the other videos and you see how the roots will expand out. But I want you to notice this. There are two sprouts that come out. Okay, they will separate and then the plant will grow. That's a dicot. Okay, there's your cotyledons that are coming out. So you have these two leafy sprouts and you can see, see them right here, the better picture, and they sprout out from there. That's very different from a monocot. In a monocot, this is what it looks like. Okay, this is a, a, a corn seed and when you put it in the ground, you can see that the root goes down and it's going to start growing out the top but notice what comes out of the ground. This doesn't look like the other one. The leaf is a single shoot, monocot. Mono means one. You have this single shoot that comes out the top. Now, you still have the same root type pattern that's coming out of it. You get all these root hairs. <coughs> Excuse me. But you, the, what's coming out of the ground is going to be a little bit different. Very, very different. And so it's going to be very, very important that you notice the difference between the two. Okay, I'm going to show you one more time. In the dicot, it is formed like this. Okay, and you have the two cotyledons. You can see how different that looks compared to a monocot. In the monocot, it looks completely different. Now, this is the differences between them when you're talking about their seeds or when they're first starting to sprout. But there are a little bit more things. What do you do if the plant is not a seed? What do you do from there? Well, there are a couple other things that can help you. The second thing it talks about right here 
is that its leaves have parallel veins. And if you'll notice in this picture, you have these long veins that go down the leaf. Good example would be the grass in your yard. If you've ever sat out in the grass, just sort of played with it, you'll notice, especially St. Augustine grass, it has these long veins in it. That's what the monocot looked like. The dicot looked very different. In the dicot, you have a leaf that looks like this. And in this leaf, this is what you would see uh, on like a tree. You have this main branch that goes through here. Then all the veins come off from that. Very, very different. It's branched. Okay? And so you can really tell the difference. Typically, we see these on trees. And that's where you and I would see it. And it has these big leaves, and they have these, these big veins, and you have all these little veins that are coming off in different directions. Very, very different from one another. Okay? Let's look at another difference real quick. The flowers. If they flower, right here, the flowers are in multiples of three. If you count how many petals, one, two, three, four, five, six, it's a power of three. Monocots have that. Dicots look a little bit different. When they have their flowers, they're going to be in multiples of four, multiples of five. So if you count on this flower, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which is a multiple of five, that's the red ones and the yellowish ones here, you have ten. So they, scientists have found there's some big differences in the full-size plants, even if you don't know the seeds. Okay. So in the first section, we were talking about the seeds and what they do when they grow. If you don't know what this is, this is a peanut. Um, when you open a peanut, maybe when you go to the Rangers game or something like that, when you open a peanut from the shell and take the two halves apart, you can see the cotyledons inside. Easy, easy, easy to see. And then if it's a full-grown plant, you can tell differences between leaves. You can tell differences between flowers as well. Okay. The next thing they talk about is the root system, and I'm not as worried about that. The root system, look how the root system really, really, really spreads out for a monocot compared to a taproot. Okay? Trees have a really deep, deep taproot. Now, this is obviously a carrot, which falls into this category because of the type of leaves that it has on it. But you have this really long root that goes really, really deep. So a plant like this tree right here would have a taproot that goes way down deep to try to get as much water as possible, and then you have all the other uh, roots coming off of that. Okay. Last but not least, putting them sort of in categories, your monocots are going to be sort of your grassy plants, like we talked about the grass in your yard. Corn, have those real long leaves. Sugarcane, grasses in yard, that would be a big one that you would see every day. Sort of like these plants you see over here on the side of this picture as well. Those would all be monocots. Okay, so you can see all the characteristics. On the dicots, you will see that these are the ones that we see as sort of being woody, like a tree. You would get wood from it. Okay, so most trees, roses, if you cut the stem of a rose, you would see it doesn't get near as big around as a tree, but it has more of a woody type stem and uh, the other properties that fall into these. Okay, so you see all the properties. Now, it seemed like we covered a whole lot jumping back and forth, but here's a picture that will show you a lot of these characteristics side by side. Okay? Now I'm going to draw a line down the middle to help you. And again, you probably don't need to write this down because we've said it all, but let me walk through it real quick. We started talking about monocots and dicots, and so we mo said monocots have a cotyledon, they have a single cotyledon compared to that of a dicot. So you can compare them right here. If you look at the flowers, you have a full-grown plant. You're going to have in multiples of threes. And then in these dicots, you're going to have fours and fives. When you talk about the leaf, they have these long, long, long veins compared to the branched veins that you see here. Okay? So that's a lot easier to tell the differences between them. And one part we didn't talk about here, when you talk about wood, you've seen this when you cut a piece of wood, you can see the rings, and you talk about counting uh, how old a tree is approximately by counting the rings. These plants don't have that. Now, I'm not going to go into details about vascular bundles, but here's really the difference. These are very durable and hard. You snap a twig type thing. These are the plants that if um, the stem got bent, it would, just, it would just sort of bend over, and then it would be stuck there. It wouldn't do anything anymore. You couldn't get it to stand straight back up because it doesn't have the structure that this does. And so they have a very different stems uh, than the uh, dicots do. So 
In this video, we've talked about monocots and dicots and the big differences between them, from seeds to flowers to leaves. Okay, so you should have a really good idea of the differences between them. 